Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Space Science with Python. In the last video was again a small concept video about um, something called the sphere of influence. And as a small recap, the sphere of influence was uh, an imaginary sphere around a major object that helps us to switch between different coordinate systems or reference frames. So for example, if an object revol revolves around the sun, we have an ecliptic coordinate system in a sun-centric um, frame. And if this object is crossing the sphere of influence, for example, of our home planet, we can then switch to an Earth-centric coordinate system and then compute its trajectory in an Earth-centric way. So instead of creating some heavy numerical simulations, we can just switch between several two-body problems and make life a little bit easier, but of course less precise. And in today's session, we will try or we will start computing the sphere of influence of the Earth and see whether some objects or a particular object is crossing the SOI, so the sphere of influence or not. And small spoiler, in today's session, it will not cross the SOI. It will be uh, in the session on Saturday. But today we will just get a small warm up with this coding part. And also we will talk about another topic that's also quite relevant in science, it's about rounding errors. Sounds a little bit tedious, but we will get into this and I think you will learn some quite new nice Python snippets for rounding scientific data properly. Now what do we want today today? Um, we have again our small data um, notebook, here our Python notebook, where we will compute the um, yeah, the minimum in distance between a certain near-Earth object, it's called Orpheus, and our home planet. And I know from some source already that the closest approach between this object and the Earth was two days ago. So, yeah, I will upload this video on Wednesday, so three days ago, it was the 21st November. And we will compute the misdistance distance between this object and our home planet um, using SPICE and Python, of course, and for this I prepared also the uh, notebooks already. They are again in the description, uploaded on GitHub, and today we will get a little bit through it and use again the conical elements, so the orbital elements, and already known SPICE functions to see how we can compute the distance between this object, where we don't have any SPICE kernel, and our home planet where we already have a kernel which is also loaded here in this meta file. Now let's get started. First of all, we would like to create the date time UTC of this um, particular um, minimum distance. Of course, we should or could compute a range of dates or hours to, to determine the exact position um, or the exact time when the object was um, having a closest encounter with Earth. But I just used some uh, research table and it, and it said it was the 21st November. There was no really particular date, uh, not date, but um, um, uh, time given, so we will just use midnight and it's it's for our purpose, it's quite okay to start with this one. So we will create a daytime object with the year 2021. The month, the month is 11, so this month, and it was the 21st and I did a mistake. This You should ignore this one, I just have something in the clipboard, which we will use later. And I just com convert it into our format that is then used by SPICE, namely year, month, day, T. And then we just use um, zero, zero, zero. So that should do it. Let's have a quick check about the daytime UTC. And now come on, doesn't want to run here, ah, and it works, nice. So we convert, ah, it's a little bit buggy here, there. Just convert now the daytime UTC into date time, ephemeris time. So the 
ephemeris time that is being used by spice. So spicy pie, UTC, to ET. And this is the date time UTC. So let's run it and it runs through. Perfect. Now we want to compute the sphere of influence of Earth, right? And if you just have a small recap of the last session, the concept session, the radius of the sphere of influence is approximately the semi major axis of the larger object, so in our case, Earth, times the mass of the Earth divided by the mass of the Sun to the power of two fifths. And in our case, the semi major axis is 1 AU, so of course we could extract it from the state element, state, state vector and compute the orbital elements, but let's just assume one AU. And the mass and the Earth and Sun, they are not provided by the kernels. We have more like the gravitational parameter times the mass being provided by the kernels. But that doesn't matter whether it's m divided by m or g times m divided by g times n because the two g's are xing each other out. So we just can extract the g times m uh, values. So let's start with the sun. We have the get an, um, an array or a list from our already known function called spicy pi bot VC, vcd and what do we want to what do we want what do, what do we need we want from the body id 10 so the sun we would like to have the item gm and the number of return values, the dimensionality is one. And of course, the same thing applies also for the earth. So we can say here, this is the earth and the body ID is not 10, it's in this case is 399. And then based on this, we can now get the g time g time times m value of the sun as well as the earth so let's copy paste it so this is basically this and now we need also the semi major axis so 1 au basically and 1 au can also be extracted or created with um, one spice function namely convert so what do we have we have the value one and we would like to convert it from the input unit in unit a u to kilometers so that we can work in kilometers and not in astronomical units so one a u and this leads to the SOI, which is now basically the equation I just showed you. So SOI, Earth radius, let's pay, put it in capital letters because it's a constant. So 1 AU times GM Earth divided by GM Sun to the power of 2 fifth. So that's, that's it. We can now take a look at the SOI Earth and we have something like, well, few, almost a million kilometers. And we would like to, um, well, there is a website I will show you in a, uh, later um, that provides the values in LD, lunar distances, and I think this is quite suitable because AU is, well, the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And for close approaches to the Earth, it's quite counterintuitive. But the distance um, between Earth and, and, and the Moon in, let's say, our very cosmic vicinity in our neighborhood, it's a little bit more, I wouldn't say trivial, but you get a better feeling and understanding so we will convert later the kilometers also to lunar distances and the lunar distance here um, I extracted this value also from this website I will show you later is 380,000 kilometers around round about so the SOI 
of the Earth, the radius divided by 1 LD, will give us the distance, uh, the radius of the SOI in lunar distances. So around from, so from Earth to the distance of 2.4 times the distance to the Moon, that's the radius, the imaginary radius of the sphere of influence of our home planet. Now, in our next step, we would like to um, get the orbital elements of this object called Orpheus. And for this, we will use um, the JPL small body database lookup. As you can see here, we have the orbital elements for this object. We have the eccentricity, the semi-major axis, the perihelion, the inclination, argument of ascending node, and so on and so forth. And we have a particular value here uh, with a lot of digits and the uncertainty given in one sigma, also with a few digits. And here we see the units and AU, degrees, and so on. And now the point is that in science, or especially in <clears throat> where you provide measurement data, you will never have such a high precision, right? I mean, I don't know where JPL or how JPL is computing these values, but um, from the measurement side, you always round up the values to mostly one or two so-called significant digits. So the first significant digit is the first digit in your uncertainty or error um, after after the zeros. So for example, um, if the if your uncertainty is one point two, well the one is already the first significant digit. But if you have o zero point zero zero five, then the five is your first significant digit. So here the first significant digit comes after the at the at a uh, ten to the power of minus eight. So really, it's a really high precise value. And of course, we have to consider if you want to compute the trajectory with uh, also the, the position with certain errors, we have to consider the so-called covariance matrix of these er errors. So if, for example, if you increase E, then maybe A will decrease. Yeah? Or if you increase um, the inclination, the eccentricity is not affected at all. I mean, this is now just some random statements. So you just cannot take the um, maximum limits of the uncertainty and then re resample some imaginary um, objects. You really have to consider how these uncertainties are coupled with each other. But that shouldn't bother us now. Um, let's now just use the mean value of, of, these, of this object, but we will round it up or down using the uncertainty that is also provided. So let's first have a small thought how how we could do this. So let me start a small IPython notebook and let me also import NumPy. Now what how can we round values in Python? Well this is quite easy, right? We have like um such a number here. Uh, let's make it quite easy. And if you want to round it to the very first digit, then we use the number one as the as an argument, so it rounds to 12.3, or to 12.35 if we put the number two, and so on. Yeah, same goes also in the other direction, like with minus one, it rounds down to 10. Now the question is, we do not have anything like <coughs> like 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 the numbers of of, of digits we would like to round. We have something like, um, yeah, 12.345678.9, but we have a corresponding error, which is like 0 0.056, something like this, right? So the question is, how can we round this value? I mean, this doesn't work. This is, this is a float, and this is not how the function works. So what we could do is we could create a new function that takes the error as an input. And how could this work? Um, so we have the round function with our value and here with our error. And let's take a look at with a particular example. Um, let's take a particular error, let's say 0.012. Yeah, something like this. So the number we would like to round is like 
the number 2. What we do first is we compute the log 10 value of this error and this provides us already the value minus 1.2 so almost th uh, 10 to the power of minus 2. So what we could do here is we just take the floor of the number and it always rounds down. Yeah, So we have now minus 2. We cannot really work with flows. We, uh, the round function requires integers, so we convert it to integers. And if you recall the round function, minus 2 would affect not the would affect the digits uh, left from the uh, from the dot not on the right so we have to invert it also so minus 1 times this integer now if we put now here the round function let's say round 12 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and now this function here et voilà it rounds down to the first significant digit yeah, if we just add a zero more, it will then say 12.346. Yeah, and the same goes also in the other direction. If, for example, I just provide the error or 1.0, it's 12. And if I just provide 10, then it will probably round down. So this is, let's just show it. Yeah, maybe a just better example would be, I don't know, then... Uh, 11, 11, 12, yeah, or 15. This is a huge error. So this is how our function could look like. So we could create something like, let's call it round, um, how should we name it? Um, like round significant digits or so, so round sig. And we create a lambda function that takes a value and an error. And it takes the round function, uh, not number, round. It takes the value and our, our idea that we just created here in our IPython notebook. So just get rid of the 15 and put the word error here. And that's it. I think a bracket is missing, isn't it? Um, no, that looks good though yeah let's make a quick check so we can say round sick 12.34567 oh, yeah looks good so you could create a unit test or so to test this properly but this looks now nice so this is how you can round values um, based on the provided error which is quite nice and then you can also round uh, your your uncertainty also to the first two significant digits or so. Um, I'm quite lazy, so I will not now copy paste all these values here by hand. I already did this for you, so you don't have to be bothered by um, me typing a lot of stuff. Let me just copy paste it and let me explain to you what these values are. So we have here the perihelion in kilometers. We use the spice function to convert the values provided in AU to kilometers. We have the eccentricity, which is which has no dimension, so no physical meaning. Uh, it has a meaning, but no physical, um, yeah, dimensionality like like degrees or AU. We have the inclination, we need it in radians, so we convert it with the numpy radians function. The same also with the longitude of ascending node and the argument of perihelion. We have the mean anomaly at a certain time t0 and the corresponding time t0, which is given in Julian date and we have to convert it into ephemeris time. So this is basically this. There's no covariance matrix or so. We will just simply use the mean values. And here they are rounded now. So the eccentricity now is rounded to the to eight digits, I think. So let's take a look. Hi, come on. Okay, this is a little bit buggy today. This still doesn't wasn't it, uh, to execute. Ah, oh, there it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this corresponds with the with this value here. So perfect. We rounded our mean values. Of course, it's 
still high precision, so it's it will affect only a few meters or kilom or yeah, only a few tens of meters in precision, but still we want to work properly. Now we need to create our list where we um yeah add everything um all the values in the list for spice to, to to use. So the conex function requires a list. And this list is basically the perihelion in kilometers. Ah, come on. Next, it's the eccentricity. Then it's the inclination. We have the longitude of ascending node. And the argument of periapsis. And then, of course, the mean anomaly, as well as the corresponding epoch. And at the end, of course, the g time m value of the sun. And with this one, we can now compute the state vector of Orpheus. Orph Orpheus, come on, Orpheus state vector. And we, for this one, we use the spice function conics. And so we just use the orbital Orpheus orbital elements and the date time in ephemeris time that we provided at the top of the script. And now we can just compute it and we get and we get the state vector in kilometers. Now this is not really useful for us, right? We would like to know what is now the miss distance or the distance between this value and the earth vector. So now let's compute the earth state vector. We do not need the corresponding light time. Spicy pi dot spk geo. Um, the target is 399. The ephemeris time is date time et. The reference flame, frame is ecliptic J2000. So the orbital elements we saw were also in sun-centric coordinates in ecliptic J2000. So um, we have to take care of this one. And the observer is the 10. So we don't have the orbital elements now of the Earth. We just use the kernels. And now we can compute the Earth or Foyce distance in kilometer where we can also use another spicy pi function, which is called V norm. So basically the Euclidean norm um, of now the earth state vector. So only the first three elements. So the X, Y, Z coordinates minus the new Orpheus where it is their state vector. So the very three values and then we can just divide this value um, by 1LD. So one lunar distance. And let's take a look. And the lunar distance is now 15.09LD. So it's way beyond the radius of the sphere of influence. And now let's take a look at this, um, whether this value makes sense. And of course, I already compared it, not here with the JPL small body database lookup, but with another website called spaceweather.com. So spaceweather.com provides some interesting facts about the sun, the space weather, conditions for um, yeah, aurora and so on. And here at the bottom of the page, we have uh, some meteors, fireballs, and also the near-Earth asteroids or near-Earth objects with the current list of objects and the date of the closest distance. So here you see the missed distance, corresponding velocity, and the diameter of the object. And what do we have here? 3361 has a missed distance of 15.1 LD, and this object 
is basically, yeah, it is Orpheus. So this is what we did today. We, um, whoops, we converted the, um, we converted the, 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 not converted, but we computed the sphere of influence of Earth. We used, the, we rounded up the arrows of the orbital elements provided by this, um, by this database lookup table. We um, computed the mist distance between the object and the Earth. We saw it was beyond the sphere of influence, but we know now how to round up the values. We know now how to compute the sphere of influence and where to get uh, a first look into the data. And um, now somehow I lost my VS code. And the next time we will take a look at an object that, is ha that has a mist distance less than 2.4 um, LD so that we have to switch to the Earth-centric coordinate system and see how the orbital elements change after entering and after leaving the sphere of influence of the Earth. I hope you learned something today. Uh, I wish you nice coding and I'm looking forward for the uh, to the next session. And until then, as always, guys, take care and see you next time.